Sustainable fishing means leaving enough fish in the ocean and protecting habitats and threatened species. However, the subject has come to media attention again after the release of recent documentary film, Sea Spiracy, on Netflix in March 2021. According to our world in data.org, fish and seafood consumption per capita worldwide between 1961 to 2017 has grown more than double and has increased from 9.01 kilograms to 20.03 kilograms during the same period the world population has grown from 3.16 billion to 7.76 billion so not only there are more people but we consume more fish and seafood per capita swedish use much more fish and seafood than the average world population in Sweden, the average fish and seafood consumption per capita was 32.81 kilograms in 2017. 50% of the fish in the global human food chain is farmed, according to NOAA, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. But where does the fish that people in Sweden eat come from? According to a RISE report in 2019, it's mostly imported. 72% of Swedish seafood comes from imports and 28% from domestic producers. Swedish commercial fishers account for 21% of domestic production, with the rest coming from recreational fishing and aquaculture. Swedes import fish and seafood overwhelmingly from Norway, Denmark, and China. This is 90% of the total imports come from. In 2013, for several months, French journalists Nicolas Daniel and Louis de Barbirac studied the fishing industry from the inside. They went all the way from Norway to Vietnam, visited Sweden and Denmark. The result of their investigation was the film, revealing the truth that tries to hide the fish lobby. The investigation they started from the west of Norway, where in the countryside there are many fish farms that are engaged in artificial cultivation of salmon. The journalists met with a Norwegian activist, environmentalist, and the founder of Union of Nature Protection of Norway, Kurt Ottokolf, who believes an outrageous fact, which was hidden under the waters of the fjords. They also revealed a toxic pesticide, a thoxiquin, that been added to fish feed as an antioxidant, which can have harmful effect on human, and its use was legal and there were no limits for a thoxiquin in fish. However, since that, countries such as Japan have set limits for a thoxiquin in fish, but it took European Union, four years to change the regulation and seven years to stop the practice completely in 2020 within EU. This is probably another example, of how good investigating journalists and environmentalist activists can make difference. However, the use of a thoxiquin has stopped in European Union, but not worldwide, and all other environmental issues remain in place when it comes to fish farming and overconsumption. But what can we do for a sustainable solution? The obvious thing is that we all should reduce our consumption of meat, fish and seafood, and use more vegetarian option. But, if we cannot completely stop the consumption of fish and seafood, we may start using wild fish, however that has also big environmental effect on oceans ecosystem, as currently 85% wild fish, of world's fisheries, are being overtaxed, meaning wild fish are being caught, at a faster rate than they can reproduce, so if we continue with that, we will have dead oceans soon, and no fish left for future generation. Other problem, with wild fish, is some fishing methods, catch all kinds of additional sea life, that end up dying as result, this is called bycatch. For instance trawls get dragged along the ocean floor, disrupting the ecosystem and catching sea turtles and unwanted fish, or long lines fishing tons of innocent bycatch, as well these methods are definitely not sustainable. A wild fish is sustainable if it's caught in a way that doesn't threaten the long-term survival of its species, or the ecosystem it's a part of. Hook and line fishing harpooning, and some uses of traps, are often more sustainable methods of catching fish, with these methods bycatch is minimal, and unwanted fish can be released. The documentary, made by French journalists in 2013, indicated that we cannot leave the control of sustainable fishing to the industry, as most companies are driven by profit maximization, and some of them may ignore sustainability, for short-time profit growth. Further even politicians have shown that they cannot be reliable when it comes to sustainability, as even if we ignore corruption and conflict of interest in some cases, the political system has shown that in practice their decision-making process can be very slow to act. This leaves huge responsibility on us as consumers, to educate ourselves, adjust our shopping behavior, and monitor the industry. Consumers play a big role in determining the future of fisheries, and keeping our oceans healthy. In European Union, 
a new common fisheries policy, that is based on respecting the ocean's ecosystems, this should help to keep our oceans healthy and to support the livelihood of fishermen for future generation. However, in European Union, average consumption is 22 kilos of fish per person per year, European appetite for fish, can no longer be covered by European fishing boats alone. EU import nearly two-thirds of its fish, much of this from unregulated fishing fleets. 20% of fish sold in European Union, come from unregulated fishing fleet. That is why, transparency of the supply chain, is become increasingly important, and the role of organizations such as Marine Stewardship Council, and Aquaculture Stewardship Council, become vital, as they work globally beyond European borders. The Marine Stewardship Council, MSC, is an independent non-profit organization, which sets a standard for sustainable fishing, and the Aquaculture Stewardship Council, ASC, is an independent non-profit organization and labeling organization, that establishes protocol on farm seafood, while ensuring sustainable aquaculture. Overall, the report states several positive effects, of those organizations' work. Even authors, such as Jared Diamond, and Andrew Bomford, claim the work of MSC, as good examples of collaboration among environmentalists, and businesses for a sustainable economy, and a successful strategy for achieving conservation goals, through collaborative, market-based solution. But also there are some criticisms, and some aspects that make the MSC, a weak certification. Currently MSC looks at three principles, first whether the targeted stock is overfished, second what impact the fishing has on the wider ecosystem, and last the strength of the fisheries management. But the MSC has seen criticism, for example for certifying fisheries, with a high percentage of bycatch, who may not reporting bycatch, or do not scrupulously comply with MSC arrangements. So, that means if you have the MSC label, you can't always be sure it's sustainable. But in more cases than not, it is better than a non-certified seafood, at least if you are in the North American, or European region. So, as a consumer the least that you can do, to support sustainable fishing, is to purchase labeled and certified fish and seafood, in shops and restaurants. The more public pressure there is for sustainable seafood products, the faster that unsustainable fishing practices will be eliminated. Thank you for watching. I hope you find it useful. If you did, please like and share the video so we can inform more people and help eliminating unsustainable fishing. For more on the subject, I will include the links for all sources below this video.